Good morning, my beautiful ray of sunshine. I just wanted to give you a little note, wake you up with a smile on your face, tell you how much I love you, how excited I am, how emotional that this journey with you has been and how much more emotional it's going to get, but I'm just so happy to be doing it with you. And I'm looking forward to an amazing rest of our life together with many little new ones, including puppies and babies. And I love you. Oh, and chickens and pigs and a whole farm. And our kids picking up the chicken eggs and cleaning up the chicken coop. Okay, bye. Oh, I didn't even give you your card. Right there. Should I open the card first? You can open that after. Okay. Best gift saved for last. Happy birthday, my love. It's 5 9 13. Why are you so nervous? <laughs> I don't know. Careful, it's. <laughs> really? Are you serious? Are you gonna have a baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god! Yes! Oh god, baby, I love you so much. <laughs> It was rough. When you find out that there's not a heartbeat, and just as fast as that joy came, it it left the room. Like I've felt time stop before, but like I've never felt it more than in that moment, in that room. I think it was hard. Like you tell your parents, you tell your family, like you're pregnant, and you get to go around and you get to share all of that. And then I think the worst part is when you go back and you have to say, you know, we're not pregnant anymore. I was so young at that age; it never even crossed my mind that a miscarriage was something that would happen to me. A big part of that is because a lot of women don't even talk about miscarriages. It's so common and happens to so many women, but no one talks about it. So it's one of those things that you just don't think will happen to you until it does. After the miscarriage, we decided to keep trying and just see what happens. I remember telling people, yeah, I'm trying, but I'm not really trying. It's just one of those things where if it happens, it happens. But deep down, I was, I was trying. I just didn't want to admit that I was doing all that I could naturally um, in order to get pregnant and it not happen. It had been three years since my miscarriage and nothing had happened. And uh, finally one day I remember waking up and feeling like it may be happening. Uh, it's kind of awkward starting this video, but, um, you know, right now I'm not really talking to anyone else about this, so I thought I would just video it and talk to you guys about it. I think it's going on four years now that Stephen and I had a miscarriage, and it was, you know, obviously it was difficult, and we really wanted to have kids like four years ago, which is crazy to believe because my life has changed so much since then. But um, we just, nothing's really happened for us. I guess I'm making this video because um, it's Super Bowl Sunday today. And for about a week now, I've been feeling really different. I'm excited, but I'm also nervous because I don't want to be like overly excited. And then, you know, I had my little brother pick me up a pregnancy test. He's actually the only person I've talked to about it. <sighs> I'm like really nervous right now. I'm excited, but like... What if I'm not, you know? It's like... It's 
not something I talk about a lot because um, it's it's just it's hard thing to talk about, you know. But like, it's been like a lot of years, and I don't know. The fact that like I haven't gotten pregnant kind of scares me because I'm like, oh my god, like what if I can't get pregnant or something? You know, I think everybody fears that sometimes. Like, well, I'm not sure if everybody fears that, but I definitely do. I'm holding this in. So, it's like I can only disappoint myself at this point, you know? But, I'm really nervous right now. There's such a huge stigma attached to talking about infertility. I was ashamed to talk about it for a long time. I bottled up my feelings about the situation. I didn't even want to talk to Steven about it because... Um, I just felt like talking about it would make it worse or make it real. It says no. This is, this is why I don't like to do these things because it really sucks when it says no, but... I just have to like shake it off now and act normal when Steven comes home because I'm it's definitely isolating you feel like no one could possibly understand what you're going through I remember it was hard for me to initially accept that my best naturally was just not enough for a viable pregnancy. I think one of the biggest steps you can make is to accept that you need help. So we went to go see Dr. Wong and um, I remember walking into the fertility clinic and seeing a sign that said expect to expect and I wanted to start crying. Just those words, like, it gave me so much hope. Expect to expect, I don't, I don't know why, but I, I felt such a instant feeling of relief. Fertility treatments can be really expensive and Steven and I decided the best thing for us was to start at the least expensive, um, least invasive to my body step and then work our way up uh, the least amount of drugs I have to pump into my body I felt like was the right choice for me to start off in and for us that was taking Clomid you can take Clomid and try naturally just having sex and see what happens which a lot of women do or you can take Clomid and um, add an IUI on top of that. And an IUI is basically when they take Steven's semen and they put it in what I like to call a little turkey baster and they just help the semen get to where it needs to go. Um, so that's an IUI and we decided that taking Clomid with IUI was our first step. Clomid had some serious side effects on me, to say the least. It took me a while to realize that Clomid was actually making me fully depressed. I wasn't myself. I wasn't in control of my thoughts. I was um, miserable, absolutely miserable. We just arrived at the doctor's office. One of two things can happen today. One, they'll check to see if I'm ovulating and I might be ovulating on my own and they'll turkey baste me. Two, I won't be ovulating, which I think that's gonna be the answer because my body just doesn't want to ovulate and they're gonna shoot me up with something It'll force you that to forces my body to ovulate. And then we gotta come back to Then I have students. to come back tomorrow again to get turkey basted, so. That's where we're at right now. <laughs> my choice of words, turkey basting, that's just like the best way I can describe
I've been feeling large, like bloated. I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go over here too. <laughs> um, my mood swings kind of went away, hot flashes went away. Cause I think the Clomid has already done what it needed to do. I'm gonna blame the bloat on the Clomid, but whatever, could be just me feeling bloated. <sighs> my body just feels like this today. <sighs> like, don't give me tight clothing right now. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like for the rest of my life, when I eat a Starburst, I will think of this office. Because this jar here has been used to describe my eggs many times. And in yellow, this jar, yellow is good, orange is. In this jar, your yellow eggs are good, and the orange eggs are no good. He, and the doctor used to use pink as good eggs, but everyone would eat them. So. Obviously, nobody wants orange or yellow. <laughs> the pink eggs, the pink ones, need to be the good. So eggs. we have a tradition now that every time we walk into this office, we eat some of the uh, Starburst for breakfast. It's for good luck. Oh, my stomach's cramping. I think I'm just nervous. I don't think I, I don't know what's going on with me right now. I just feel nervous every time I'm in this office. I think that's perfectly acceptable. I don't want to introduce my vagina to a new person today. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I'm upset that my doctor's <laughs> on vacation right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah, my stomach is cramping. I don't know why. Oh, nerves. So we'll schedule you guys for a first IUI tomorrow mm -hmm. and an ultrasound and most likely a second IUI on a Wednesday. Okay. Okay, so you can ovulate in, doesn't mean you're ovulating now, but it's what it's doing, it signals your brain to release the egg. So tomorrow will be the day at the earliest or at the latest Wednesday you'll be ovulating. Okay. Okay, so you're going to eat now? Yeah, because Stephen has a meeting at one. Oh yeah, you have, guys have time. So we just left the doctor's appointment. We um, had a positive ovulation. She's ovulating. This is good because for the longest time I thought, am I not just, am I just not an ovulator? No trigger shot needed. And so I didn't need the trigger shot. The trigger shot is what would have forced me to ovulate. But we did learn something new. We did learn some new stuff. There's so much I'm learning about my body that I don't even know. Like it's crazy. But, um, so basically tomorrow I have to come back for the IUI. IUI basically means turkey based. They're gonna take Steven's swimmers and they're gonna just they filter, where they need to go. Filter them out. Filter them out, and put them where in. they need to go. Look at this little guy. I know, he's so cute. There's a little puppy. Can you see? Oh, He's a cutie. So I come in tomorrow for the IUI and then again on Wednesday. So today's Monday, Tuesday I go I for IUI, Wednesday, just to ensure that we get the peak of my ovulation. But what I learned new about my body today and also just makes me like not, I don't wanna say I'm not super hopeful because I, I'm trying to be hopeful that this works, but apparently you could ovulate but some people don't ovulate enough for a viable pregnancy. So your levels could be a lot lower than somebody with higher levels of ovulation, whatever. So I come back next Monday and they're gonna check my blood to see if I'm ovulating, if my levels of ovulation are high for a pregnancy. And if they're not, then they have to up my dosage of Clomid, which to me means makes me, is gonna make me five times crazier and I don't even know those heat flashes like catch me in a tub of ice for the next week <laughs> if this is the case because honey oh, oh, I can't boy. it's not a good time to be living in the valley okay I'll tell you that much so that's pretty much everything that we got from today the new doc not new doctor but the doctor we had today who is not my normal doctor was actually really really nice I liked him. He gave me good vibes for the brief moment that we, you know, shared that shared the intimate experience. You know, yeah, 
exactly. Um, I just left and I called my mom, FaceTimed her immediately to tell her, you know, everything that happened in the appointment. And I told her I was ovulating and she's like, well, you guys have time to kill right now in between your meetings, right? I was like, <laughs> is she telling me to have sex in my car right now? Is that what she's telling me right now? Like, it took me a second to register that that's exactly what she was telling me to do. I remember having to pee on the little sticks. Gotta pee on those sticks to see if you get a happy face. I never got happy faces. I just figured I couldn't ovulate. But once I was on the Clomid, I remember getting my first happy face and I was just over the moon. Because once you got the peak happy face, then you go in for the IUI and that's so exciting. This bitch finally gave me a happy Holy face. Holy shit, I don't think I've ever seen one of those on finally here. Finally gave me a happy face. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a happy face on here. Like, that's peak. peak. You're, you're at your peak fertility. I'm peaking. <laughs> it's turkey basting day. <laughs> Is that disturbing that I call it that? No, I think that's, that's like the clinical term. I Clin think. It's science. I think it's science. Science. Uh, today is Tuesday. What's Tuesday the day? Tuesday the what? Honestly, I couldn't no, tell you. I want you to figure this one out. I think it's like the 12th, the 13th. You don't even know. No. Fuck. We 19th. are. Tuesday, the 18th of August. 13th. 13th. Honestly, honey, I already have so much on my mind, okay? I can't keep up with, like, <laughs> what day it is. Yeah, that's, that's probably tough. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Our first IUI. I couldn't really sleep last night. My back was hurting. I was having dreams. And then I woke up at like 5 a.m. and I started thinking about like the weirdest shit. I started thinking, oh, like the element of surprise is gone. Like being able to tell your husband that you're pregnant is always like such an exciting moment where you get to surprise him and be like, we're pregnant. And he's like, oh my God, what? But I'm not gonna have that. I'm not gonna have that this time because, you know, we're we're doing it this way. And it's just a little thing, I know, but it's something I was thinking about. So my mom knows what we're doing and we've been keeping her filled in. But then last night I started thinking in my sleep, like, oh my God, like that means that she's gonna be look at looking at me like a turkey in the oven. And, and, and when you look in, you're like, is she is she done yet? Is the turkey done? Like, I feel like that's how it feels when people are waiting for you to get pregnant. Like, I just feel like a turkey in an oven. It's, it's kind yeah, of awkward. What's it gonna be like for me? It's kind of awkward for you. Yeah, I'm a little nervous, but I'm optimistic. It's optimistic, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Information on that everything looks correct. Are you allergic to any antibiotics? Uh, no. No? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and give you one for today. Just in case you were wondering, this is how you were conceived. Video for our future child. <laughs> it was really romantic. I'll take you out later. Uh, where are you taking me? You want to go to the movies? Disneyland? The movies? It's all I get? <laughs> Mother of your child? <laughs> Just another movie night? Right. Jeez, I thought you were going to whine and dine me at all least. Right, we'll change it up. Movie night. <laughs> Nothing big here. And here's your ovary on the other side. Nothing big there. So you have ovulated, so timing's perfect. Okay. Okay. Give me an AFC of like seven on her right. Give me the same on her left and give me a CL and eleven millimeter. Ten oh seven. On August thirteenth. Oh man, that was emotional and uncomfortable. After IUI, I just felt so much hope. It's funny because part of you wants to feel this excitement, this hope that, oh my gosh, like, this is it, this is it. And then you pull back inside because you're scared that 
this is going to be a huge disappointment. And sometimes I feel like I don't want to let myself get too excited because the more excited I let myself get, the more that, the more let down I get. And so it's this balancing game of what will be will be and oh my God, I really want this and just uh, constant battle in my head all the time. I did it. Steven's like, are you crying because it was painful or emotional? I'm like, I don't even know. Tears are just like, I think it's emotional, but it's like good emotion. It was pretty uncomfortable, I'm not gonna lie. Like, get really bad cramps, but we'll see two weeks from now, right? That's what she said. Taking the home pregnancy test. Two weeks from now. It's crazy to think in two weeks. I mean, I, like, I hate that I <laughs> that I know what day. She's like, on this day, take a pregnancy test. I feel like I'm just gonna be sitting here like every day, kind of like. The two week wait is something that a lot of people talk about in the fertility world. Something I definitely didn't know about, but the two week wait after you IUI is um, so slow. <laughs> Because you need to wait two weeks before you can get the results to see if you are in fact pregnant and if it worked. People tell you not to think about anything too much, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you know how easy life would be if you could just stop your thoughts, you know? Like, you can't really, you can pretend to not think about it. Like, no, I'm not thinking about it. But really, you're just like, that's always something I never understood. When people tell you, just don't think about it. And to me, it'd be more like, think about it, but, you know, understand all the possible outcomes and, you know, understand that they will be there for a reason. That makes more sense instead of don't think about it. But, um, yeah, two weeks from today, we'll see. First IUI. Thankfully, Stephen and I had a trip to Italy. So we're about to get on a flight right now, but... Come in and be for our flight for a little blood work. Really? She's gotten better at needles, so. Mm. Good morning. So it's currently 2 a.m. right now, and uh, Tizzy and I just got back from Tuscany. So our time zones are like all fucked up right now, but I'm actually I'm currently in CVS trying to pick up a pregnancy test. So it's an exciting time. It's a trying time. I'm not sure. I'm like, I'm nervous because what if it comes back negative? I want it to come back positive, but what if it comes back negative? Fuck. Let me do all of this again, and I know that's going to be really hard on Desi, but I'm really, really hoping for a positive pregnancy. And I'm gonna get some flowers, a card, and I'm just gonna like, let's do this. Cross my fingers. Let's pray, guys. I got you a little care package. So 14 days after the IUI, so we got clear blue, digital rapid pregnancy test. Accurate you got multiple double confirmation. Tests. Okay. Then we also got this first response six days sooner, you know, just in case you want to double test. Okay. Okay. And then we got the care package. A little Hershey's cookies and cream. My fave. Oh. And then we got some Oreos. Also dangerously. Also dangerous. Something that I like. And then He's I got already you. trying to fatten me up. I got you a little note. So. Oh. Thanks, baby. Love you. Timing is interesting because the moment Steven brought home the pregnancy tests. I started my period. This is so hard. I didn't even like get a chance to take the pregnancy pregnancy test. I 
I was sitting in my bed and then I just felt it, you know, my period and... It's like so hard on me mentally. And physically, like physically, this is like, it's just hard. And I know I have to be patient and I know that like, I'm going to get through this. But it's just hard. It's never easy to hear you're not pregnant. just there's no right answer there's nothing that you can say to make really anything better poor Steven I I know he um, he struggles with the right thing to say to me because he doesn't know and I guess nobody knows the right thing to say to someone so it's an impossible position to be in today was really tough I pulled myself together and I went to two events and had a full meeting and that's just life, you know, you have to just keep going, keep pushing and push through. What has been helping me a lot through this process is just telling myself that it's what I have to do. It's what you have to do. It's what you have to do. It's just the way it is. And, and to stop comparing myself with people who just got pregnant easily, it just, it, it's just what I have to do. It's just my, this is my path, this is my journey, and it's completely different from somebody else, and that's okay. Today, I'm just gonna let myself feel. Um, I decided to take the day off, and my dad's actually coming over right now, because obviously, he knows what happened, and he's so sweet, he asked what he could do to make me feel better, and I said, come over and help me garden, so even though it's hot as shit out here, we are going to garden. I basically want my backyard to look like Italy, so I am going to plant as many flowers and plants as I possibly can um, because it's something I do have control over and I feel like when something happens in your life that you can't control, well me particularly that I can't control, I like to do something that I do have control over that makes me happy, so that's my solution and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. And I guess I'll go to the doctor tomorrow and see what the next step is in this whole journey. And I have to know that every single step of the way and every time I feel disappointed, like, I truly feel like it's only gonna make me stronger and this is the first blow with professional help that I've had, so I'm prepared now for another if I have to go through that. Um, I know so many women who have come forward with their stories and they've had so many more than me and so many worse experiences. They give me strength with every story that I can do this and yeah, that's, that's about it.